This hour of the show is brought to you by Gutter Helmet of Northern Arizona. The Jeff Orbit Show starts now. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for listening. Jeff Orbit's here. Happy to be here with you today. Coming in a little hot. You could say that. <laughs> well, it's hot out, but I mean, we're, we're like flying in here in the uh, with show prep and everything in the nick of time. Back up in Flagstaff, made it up the mountain. That's a, that's always a good thing. Running from the aliens. You hear about this? They're doing the uh, uh, um, Congress is doing some hearing today, or did some hearing today? Oh, I thought you on meant aliens. Our cornfield. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, that's what delayed me today because I, I I thought I had the not the aliens, but the deer. I want to keep everything out of there, right? And I thought I had the deer out. You know, they had come in the other night, and they started munching away and destroyed like 20 of our stalks, which, you know, that's a lot of corn. So I, I was kind of frustrated. And then so I, I put out a radio the other night, and I, I was playing NPR because I figured that'd scare anyone I away, told right? you it would just attract them, and they'd have like a deer dance party. <laughs> but these are people have, telling bad on stories the side. on NPR, yeah. Anyway, so I put that out there, and they got, they got back in there last night, so I had to get some... Uh, like, like chicken wire, four foot fencing. And I know you like four feet, they're going to jump, but these are smaller deer down there. So hopefully, hopefully we're good. Cause man, we got a lot that's just about to be ready. So anyway, that's why I'm coming in a little hot today. Um, we do have comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we got some, con- I, I said yesterday during the program, Hey, I know it's summertime and a lot of you are out and, you know, not thinking about all this stuff and not commenting. And then all of a sudden, because of that, we get or comments. That might so have been, it. it might have been when we said no comments, no show. No show. Yeah, we were about to go on strike without comments. So we want more comments to come in. We'll get to some of these in just a second. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Or we will go on strike. As I was leaving Camp Verde, I did see one of the UPS drivers, though, with the door open and you know driving around. Because yesterday we talked about how they had negotiated a deal to avert a strike. And part of that was to... Doors and AC. Doors and AC, which makes sense. I, I, I guess I would, I, would, I would be in line. I know. That I'd be on the picket line for that. a hot job all day. Whew. So all you drivers out there, I guess, yeah, basic stuff like a door and some AC would be good. Although I think up here in Flagstaff, they're probably like, I'm not going to turn the AC on because I'm just going to leave the door open and get in and out. So uh, we do have some comments on strikes because I mentioned that yesterday. So we'll get to at least one of those in just a second. Uh, hey, if, you, if your phone breaks, don't throw it out. It's bad for the environment to do that. Uh, don't get a new one either because that's bad for your for your man purse, or your your satchel, or whatever. <laughs> Don't you carry a man? So you, you you do a fanny pack, right? Oh yeah, are those All coming the back? Those so coming stylish. Back. Yeah, those are coming back. They, they are convenient, but they just look really dorky. You know, <laughs> I mean, it'd be, I, I've thought about it before. It's like God, it'd be so convenient. Put your phone and your in all your dreams. Yeah, put, put a little handgun in You're there. Like, you if know? only it was acceptable <laughs> socially. It should be. We shouldn't. We shouldn't frown on people that wear fanny packs. Anyway, if you want to put a, a new to you smartphone in your fanny pack, go to Just Wireless. Uh, two locations in Flagstaff, right there on Milton Avenue, right as you come in off of I seventeen. Also, and this is the one you probably want to head to here before July runs out because they're having great specials, great deals, like 50% off on a lot of accessories uh, right across from the Flagstaff Mall at that Just Wireless location. You can also get your existing smartphones repaired. They do an excellent job at Just Wireless fixing those cracked screens, charging ports, putting in new batteries. Zach's been on the program many times here, here and he's told us how, hey, they say you can't change these batteries out, but I do it every day, all day long. So go to Just Wireless across from the Flagstaff Mall or right Right there on Milton Avenue. Yeah, so they're having these hearings on UFOs. And I find this stuff fascinating. Now, I, I think, first of all, the question I'll pose to all of you out there is, are we being visited by UFOs or what they're calling um UAPs now. They got all of a sudden a couple of years oh, ago. of course there needs to be a new name. Yeah, they, they, they changed it. Unidentified aerial phenomena. I, I always get this word, phenomena. Unidentified aerial phenom- phenomena. <laughs> <laughs> so phenomena. Jeez. I like UFOs better. Unidentified flying objects. That's the thing we've been talking about. And that's about what for, everybody for calls it. Decades and decades and decades. So you remember the videos that came out, these compelling videos from the Department of Defense. These were US. The blurry ones. <laughs> they were blurry, but I mean, they're not like 
Bigfoot walking with the arms going back and forth from the 70s or whenever those videos that were proved to be totally bogus. No, these are, this is the Defense Department coming out, and these are pilots who, in it was, I think it was 2017, they took this, this video, they locked on, and clearly it's objects that are going super fast, doing, going in and out of the water, uh, and somebody leaked these, video, these videos. They didn't want them to come out, obviously, and basically they come out, the Defense Department, and say, um, we don't know what they are. They're... They don't call them UFOs. They call them the UAPs. Well, and you can tell from the video of just like the voices in the background that they're oh, these guys are confused and shocked. Yeah, and they're seeing it in in real time. They're trying to engage or follow or whatever. Uh, what they're seeing is obviously higher, uh, better quality than what we're seeing. Although nowadays with the technology with filming and stuff, you'd think we would have three D high definition imagery of these things at this point. Well, probably they do. Yeah, well, and that's the point. So that's the point of the hearings that happened today. Uh, here's from the Associated Press. Whistleblower tells Congress the U.S. is concealing multi-decade program that captures UFOs. Uh, the U.S. is concealing a long-standing program that retrieves and reverse engineers unidentified flying objects. A former Air Force intelligence officer testified Wednesday to Congress uh, just a little while ago. The Pentagon has denied his claims. Retired Major David Grushes, G-R-U-S. CHS highly anticipated testimony before a House Oversight Subcommittee was Congress's latest foray into the world of UAPs. So we keep changing those, uh, which is the official term the U.S. government uses instead of UFOs. While the study of mysterious aircraft or objects often evokes talk of aliens and little green men, Democrats and Republicans in recent years have pushed for more research as a national security matter due to concerns that sightings observed by pilots may be tied to U.S. adversaries. Um, so the, anyway, they had this hearing, and there's multiple people who've come out now, and the videos have come out. So I, I guess I ask you, you've seen, you've probably seen the videos. If you haven't, just YouTube, uh, Pentagon videos, UFO videos, Defense Department UFO videos. These are the ones that came out just in 2020. Uh, what do you think, uh, and what is it? Does the U.S. have something? Have they gotten something? Have they reverse engineered stuff? And where would they come from? I mean, it, it's so far. It's such great distances to to, to come uh, to planet Earth. Especially if you're not going to like reveal yourself. Why? Yeah. Why and wouldn't just, they like, reveal themselves? Around. Why? Why has it become even more? You know, more recent, more videos. Is it the technology? Is um, they're claiming that they're seeing more of this stuff because of increased sensor technology and all that, and they're able to capture it a lot better. But I, I find it fascinating. I mean, I, I would say a lot of the stuff that people are seeing out there. A lot of reports and this and that people are, you know, people are probably misidentifying a lot of this, but I find it hard to believe that it's a hundred percent misidentified. And when you're getting into these pilots and these when videos, you have so much, yeah, now that defense department's saying, Hey, we don't know what these are. Um, they're calling it, they're not saying it's otherworldly or whatever, but they're saying, well, could it be adversaries? But then they don't have that kind of technology either. The, the ability to, the speed, uh, the G-forces and all of that. Uh, That's it, true. So and probably the reason that they're changing the word, I'm sure they say some other reason, is because you say UFO and you for, forget at first that it's just an unidentified flying object, so it could be anything. True. Everyone's minds leaps to aliens, and oh, yeah. so that's probably why they changed the name. Yeah, that makes sense because you, you, are, you, are, you are correct. First thing you think of UFOs, Roswell, Little Green Men, Aliens in Cornfield. Remember the UFO fields. museum we went to? Did we go to Roswell? Did we go to, did we go to Roswell? a little alien. I, I don't remember where it was. Yeah, we, I just that's right. I we, that, no, that was, that, was, that was Roswell in, in New Mexico. We did go there. That's right. And we went to this museum and it was... <laughs> Or it's, it's, it was fun. We had a fun day, right? It reminds me of, and you're wearing the shirt, the Mothman shirt. Is that the oh, Mothman yeah. shirt? It's like, it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Just some sketchy pictures and like Bigfoot witness pictures. accounts. They're, they're so. blurry Bigfoot pictures, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know about all this stuff, but I do know that there are a ton of people seeing stuff. There's credible people who've come out. The defense department is credible as, as that may be. Um, and 
what their motives are of coming out on this stuff. P- politicians, uh, who is it? Marco Rubio, I believe, is one of them who's severely interested in this. But yeah, it's uh, your thoughts. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Little green men or some kind of advanced technology that m- the military has. What do you think all this stuff is? I'd love to share the e- emails later in the program or on tomorrow's program. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. The Mothman uh Museum that was interesting because this is some alleged creature that is like a winged. Yeah, I was weird. there for like a year or something in the town, and then yeah. like this bridge collapsed. Yeah, and it yeah. was like suspicious though because it was like the thirteenth or like no, it couldn't have been the thirteenth day, the thirteenth month because 13th, that doesn't. No, thirteenth month won't work. Thirteenth hour but, that won't um, work either. I don't know something like the thirteenth <laughs> like thing on the bridge that mm-hmm. was holding it up collapsed. Yeah, the, the so bridge collapsed. Yeah. Claim Mothman, but yeah. apparently he also um died in the oh collapse. is he gone now oh, is that why we he hasn't seen been him? sighted since uh, he probably did die. but the whole town that was a movie they that. did a movie on that which we still haven't seen richard gear was in it uh you can't remember. i think it was called the mothman oh yeah we said we were gonna no, we never that, that. We we this was one of isabel's finds this was was it kentucky no west virginia west virginia yeah west virginia you know that your shirt says yeah so we, we you pop five bucks in the coffee can to go into the so-called i'm doing big air quotes Mothman Museum. I remember a lot of um, <laughs> just like statues and like sculptures and like art of Mothman. Yeah, what they art look like. art. Mar- Mothman sculptures, things like that. I, I just find that the, the, the UAP thing, though, I do find fascinating, though, because this is... Uh, th- this has really entrenched our culture for for a long time, and you know everybody does think little green men. You think of the uh, Independence Day, remember that movie, or like we like yeah. that movie Signs with with Mel Gibson, where the alien, of course, is in the cornfield, and this is just fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I'd like to know is there is there more out there, and what are some of these things that just clearly are unexplained when you, when you look at them on video. All right, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. We do have Glenn Lease coming up to give us a market update here in just a little bit. I've got a lot of top news picks we want to hit on as well, so stick around for all of that. Plus, Olivia's got some comments, which we should hit first because we asked for comments, and if we don't get to them first, they wind up getting washed away by our blatherings and our diversions into, who knows, alien uh, UAPs or whatever they're calling them now. Go ahead, let's, let's hit one of them. All right. Hello, Jeff. I'm a retired firefighter and paramedic from Sedona Fire District. I started my career at Verde Rural Fire in rural Cottonwood. My my starting pay as a full-time firefighter and EMT was $6.75 an hour. We organized the International Association of Firefighters for better pay and better staffing. We regularly ran calls with two firefighters and waited for reserves to respond to help. After we organized our local union 3690, we received better pay and staffing went up to the recommended minimum level set by NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association. We were able to safely respond to calls of service with adequate staffing, providing the standard of care for medical emergencies and uh, safe staffing for fires. Mm. That would never have happened unless we started the union. So in some cases, it's good for public agencies to start unions. Thanks, and I really enjoy your show. Sincerely, Jack. Hey Jack, thanks for, and thanks for all your years of service uh, doing that. Two, two on at that point. That's interesting because now I think the standard is three or four uh, per call out there. And um, I know I, my, my neighbor's uh, uh, EMT, and we've had him on, and some other union folks from the the fire. Uh, fire departments throughout northern Arizona, your area as well. So let's back up a little bit. Yesterday, I was surprised to learn, and let me let me get the name of this thing. We were talking about how the IRS is ceasing for the most part, so they claim, to do the, the, the midnight raids on people who don't pay their taxes or who they have a dispute with, which causes potential harm to the people they're knocking at the door with. You know, you show up with guns at four in the morning, bad things happen because my reaction would be, is someone trying to break in? Is someone trying to burglarize? And all of a sudden you grab your gun, they're going to they're gonna take you down, right? Creates a bad situation, creates a bad situation for the agents as well. So they said, hey, we're, we're eliminating that. And I said, well, that's a good thing. I think we can handle these IRS questions in a face-to-face in front of coffee and, and yeah, go through the financial seem records. Yeah, it quite necessary yeah. to go breaking in. Yeah, do you need to show up with guns and, and you know in the middle of the night? So the NTEU, the – where'd that go, Olivia? It's, it's the union for the 
Let's see. NTEU welcomes the IRS decision to halt uh, the unannounced visits by our IRS, IRS field agents. Oh, it's a National Treasury Employees Union. And I just was like, whoa, there's a union for IRS folks? And there's and 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 I really don't. Maybe it's more on the federal side. I I don't know. I haven't given who was that Jack. Jack, you bring up a great point about safe conditions and this and that, um, because I, I was pretty stern yesterday in saying that I don't like public sector unions because I don't want a bunch of Q, and, and I'm not comparing the fine work that you do for EMT for firefighting uh, for forest fires out there. I know there's people listening who are uh, out there battling. Uh, well, they're probably not listening right now because they're battling forest fires. But I know we have, uh, I have people comment who work for the National Forest Service doing that. Um, I, I, I get really frustrated though when we have these bureaucrats, these cubicle warriors in DC, and they unionize. And then it becomes the agency becomes about propelling their job and the organization, keeping that going, right? Even though, hey, maybe we don't need twenty five thousand employees, maybe we could do this with five thousand, or maybe we shouldn't even exist at all. But once that body is created, it just it, it becomes a behemoth, and then you get a, a union, you get all these people that put political pr- pressure because all of a sudden they're twenty five thousand strong, hundred thousand strong. So then the politicians look at them as, oh, they're they're voters. They're we gotta keep them employed even though the position is useless. Let's think of like, do we need the Department of Education? You know, are they represented by some kind of union? Jeez, I, I, I hope not. But Jack, you bring up a great point. I'm gonna have to mull that over. I'm I'm never um averse to uh, changing my my thoughts on things. But I do remember uh when I was on the Flagstaff City Council, the when they had budget talks, when we had budget talks as, as a city, and I, I don't know how other cities and communities handle this, you would have each of like the department heads come in and you'd have, for example, the firefighters uh, or the fire chief come in and there would be somebody there who represented the, I don't know how many, empl- hundred firefighter employees and this and that saying, Hey, we got a real problem with, we only got two people per engine or, you know, we're getting paid 20% less than Tempe or this or that, uh, that kind of, I guess, collective bargaining, but at least that representation at the table. So maybe that's what they were doing down there. I'm not sure. And if you want to email me, Jack, more, more info, but, um, I definitely want to make sure we have enough firefighters and EMTs and police officers. I just not, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make, I want to make sure that we don't have, uh, a, a union group like the National Treasury Employees Union uh, encouraging more IRS, IRS agents. Uh, I don't think we need people, more people at the Department of uh, Education and Department of Energy. You know, you, you can name all these organizations that within the government. It's like, I don't want them to have that power. But you bring up an interesting point from a local perspective. I think it's quite different than what I was talking about with especially the IRS. Yeah, and the difference that you can make. Yeah. Yeah, ex- exactly. In important yeah. situations. Yeah. yeah, I would. I would rather we fire a bunch of bureaucrats. Um, and I hope I don't get audited. IRS agents <laughs> and uh, Department of Education, whatever they call these people, and on and on. And that we had police officers, we have firefighters, we have people that can thin the forests. Uh, people that can go out and an impact on your daily life. Exactly. People that can go out and inspect the bridges that are failing, you know, and we talked about yesterday that, 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 uh, and I see more news articles on that, uh, nature crossing. What's that called? Wildlife corridor. Uh, Yeah. Across the the, highway. Over the highway. They're proposing, uh, the forest, not forest service, Arizona game and fish and ADOT is talking about this. Um, you know, I, 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 maybe that's a good idea, but we have so many failing bridges. My point being, for the essential things, and, and I always find it funny when we talk about government shutdowns, it's like, oh, the government's going to shut down, but the people that keep the world going, you're never going to see the police shutting down, you're never going to see the firefighters shutting down, air traffic controllers, that's not going to happen, but it's the bureaucrats that, that always get sent home, and the world goes on just fine without them, right? And then they come back, they get all the back pay, so they got a paid vacation, and then they get back to work. And they just go back to making problems. (laughs) Making making problems for all of us. Jack, thanks for that email. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. If you want to save uh, some of your energy costs, here's what I recommend. Call the Blind Brothers because you lose a ton of your cooling that you're pumping right now to try to stay cool with the temperatures uh, down. I just left Verde Valley. It was over a hundred degrees and uh, you lose it through those windows. 
the sun blares in and you can just feel it just sucking the life out of you. So call the Blind Brothers. Get a great set of blinds. Redo all your blinds. Mention the Jeff Orbit Show when you call. You get up to half off installation. Now, I know because I use the Blind Brothers. We've got great new blinds in our home in Flagstaff. They came in, measured it all. They got rid of the old blinds. They came in, did an excellent job, gave us a great price. This is a northern Arizona company. I want you to call the Blind Brothers right now, 928 634 2423. That's the Blind Brothers at 928 634 2423 or go to theblindbrothers.com. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. Call Diamond Auto Glass first before making an auto glass claim. Here's why. Most insurance companies use a nationwide glass shop to answer their calls, and they're going to try and route you to their shop, which may very well delay the time it takes to replace your glass. When you get a rock chip in your windshield, stop by Diamond Auto Glass as soon as possible. Repairing a chip will stop it from spreading and save you from a costly windshield replacement. If you've replaced your windshield with Diamond Auto Glass, you have a lifetime chip repair warranty and no appointments necessary. Just stop on by on 4th Street and Flagstaff, and most chip repairs take about 10 to 15 minutes. Always call Diamond Auto Glass first at 928-779-4140. That's 928-779-4140, or go to thedifferenceisclear.com. What do we got going on up at Sportsman's today? Sportsman's Bar and Grill. You know the place. Wednesday, right? Voted best best sports bar in Flagstaff many years in a row. It's Wing Wednesday. At least it clarifies the day of the week for me. But. I might have some wings for Sportsman's here pretty soon if that one chicken doesn't start laying eggs. It's just eating. She's, eating. She's, she's a nice, working very she, hard, and she loves she, following she, us around. She makes up her lack of productivity with actually a personality that she comes up to you, and she's really nice. But you better listen. And she loves and she's huge, our dog. Though. Yeah, she follows the dog around. Anyway, Sportsman's Bar and Grill has some great uh, great wings, if you haven't had it up there. Voted best uh, sports bar, like I said. Uh, their wings are half, well, they half price wings on Wednesday. On Wednesday, yeah. Great deal. Plus, they've got their $4 menu. Plus, they've got great drink specials going on. Happy hour all the time up at Sportsman's Bar and Grill. So go on up there and get cool down. Get some of those spicy wings, and then you mix it with a cold, refreshing drink at Sportsman's, and it just kind of, it's it's like, what's that, what was that movie? Kuma Matata, The Circle of Life, right? It's just, it's all right there. Hot wings, cold drink. Just makes a perfect day. Just love it. Sounds like we should go there. Sounds like we should go. Yeah, we, we should. We love your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Keep those coming in. Um, I know we've got another one here, but we don't have much time, do we? So let's you want to you want to go to break and come back with that one. Plus we got Glenn Lease coming up. Uh, Glenn Lease wants to talk, and I want him to talk the ESGs, environmental social governance, this rating system that the big investment houses are using, the corporations, the woke corporations are using to decide, hey, who we do business with. Think think Bud Light. Bud Light was probably trying to pump up their ESG score with this, remember the Dylan Mulvaney guy who was transitioning from a a guy to a girl and did the whole YouTube video, the 365 days of whatever, and Bud Light collapsed. Bud Light was America's number one selling beer. Now it's, I don't even know if it's in the top 10 anymore. It's like a Uh, joke. Yeah, it's it's become a joke, and it's become a warning sign to many corporations out there uh, of what not to do. So Glenn Leist from WT Wealth Management will will share some ESG info with us, uh, plus we'll get you caught up on a lot more, I don't know, maybe even... Do we do? Are we done with UFOs? I'd love to see comments on that one. The yeah, what people the, think the UAP UFO thing and the uh, what is going on with all that? What Surely is the government has a story? Yeah, and, and why now? Yeah, could you imagine some of those stories? <laughs> why now? And why is the government pursuing this more than ever before? What's going on? Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Let's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Back in just a minute. This is the Jeff Orbit Show. You're listening to the Jeff Orbit Show. Hi, 
I got an email from a listener here. Um, I'm going to need more time on this one. Uh, Mary Jo, thank you for the email. But sir, she got a survey about voting and, and this and that. Um, political survey. So I thank you for that. And I think you're going to see more of more of those coming on. And I also got another email here regarding the hospital. You know, there's this big hospital expansion mm -hmm. and you can eat. I want you to email. Well, we want to pump up the emails because we've noticed that um, the numbers have been down a little bit here during the summer. So now we're starting to get a lot. So I appreciate probably that. Probably the heat. Yeah, pro pro probably, probably the heat. You and know, so many people are just mm -hmm. dropping dead. <laughs> just to see losing <laughs> listeners. It's not. A, it's it's not only just it's how they're how it's happening, which is melting. Yeah, you know they're the actually just are melting. Too. The cactus. Okay, get to that one here in just a second. But I got another email here, and I have to follow this one up more. That the Northern Arizona Healthcare. What is the name of this group? Uh, Northern Arizona Healthcare, um, which runs the hospital. So the group that runs the Flagstaff Hospital, and then I think they have one that branched down in Camp Verde. Maybe it's Cottonwood as well. They they have quite a few now. They have they petitioned the Flagstaff City Council. They went before the Flagstaff City Council to do a zone, a rezone of property out by the airport by Fort Tudhill there to build a big, what was this thing, like billion dollars, expensive complex, big complex to move the Flagstaff uh, Medical Center, the hospital, and all the associated stuff out there. It passed the Flagstaff City Council overwhelmingly to do the rezone. So another group came out. And they filed paperwork to bring before the voters of Flagstaff that rezoning case. So now what I'm getting from a couple of emails from a couple of listeners is that the Northern Arizona Healthcare Group is filing suit to stop the ballot initiative on the rezone for all kinds of different reasons that I don't know yet because I haven't looked into it. I'll try to reach out to the group. And I have reached out to – well. First of all, I want to reach out to the Northern Arizona Healthcare. We've talked with Joe Galley from the Greater Flagstaff Chamber. We've talked to Lori Matthews from the Flagstaff City Council on this issue. Um, I did initially. We were talking with the group that filed the petition to get this on the ballot, and they said they'd come on once they got it filed. So we'll follow up with them and give them a couple more shots here to get on the show to talk about this. But uh, yeah, this is kind of the legal wranglings that you'll see going on on any of these types of initiatives out there. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, what, what was up with the cactus? Um, so Are we in danger? This is just a headline. Okay. Sentinel of Southwest Saguaro cactus is melting, dying in Arizona heat, report says. Yeah, USA like, Today. So credible. I s America's paper, right? I saw a, a headline that some guy, scientist, says that the, the days of the sore cactus basically are, you know, are limited. Let me see if I can find I know. Again. I can read a little part of it. Until, oh, here, here. Okay, go, go. Okay. Until recently, it was assumed that the plants could adapt to high temperatures and sustain themselves in a drought, which they can. Adapt? However, Arizona's heat wave is testing those assumptions. <laughs> Excuse me. Give me a break. Here it is. Yahoo News. Saguaro cacti collapsing in Arizona extreme heat, scientist says. Remember the scientists? I don't know which one it was, but during the whole snow thing, Snowmageddon that happened, the fifth snowiest winter uh, on record, which remember Let's keep this in perspective, people. Records go back to like 1889. We're talking uh, like the world didn't start. Yeah, we're, we're talking some. Yeah, we're talking some big gaps here in, in time and record keeping. I'm always, I'm always skeptical of our, our short term view on the world. Um, but anyway, there was some science, so called scientists that came out and said, "Oh, we're in a new. What was it? Was it a 53? 63? 63? We're in a new 63 year cycle." And I'm like, "You just made that up." That is, I've never heard of a 63-year cycle. So now scientists say, hey, the saguaro cacti population is just going to collapse because of Arizona heat. It's so Arizona. It's hot. How they're like losing arms and falling over. I don't see anything <laughs> except in the headline about them melting. <laughs> maybe there was a chocolate. Like saguaro ice cream, saguaro maybe? Yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty good, I guess. Uh, it's, it's, it's media hype and parroting. I, I can't tell you, when we do show research, I can't tell you how many headlines I'm seeing. And this is a perfect example of how the mainstream national media just parrots each other at this point. There's nobody showing up. Let me let me go check let me go check that cactus. See if that actually melted or see let me see all the dying cactus. Here, here's here's the other just hype. Just blown out of proportion. I, I want to know how many people have actually had severe burns 
due to the walking on the pavement, falling on the pavement, because that's right. You hear about it all the oh, time, but like, yeah, I, I want to, uh, how many people are we talking? Eight people, How long would two you people, 8,000 people to actually get burned. Well, I could see if it's 118 degrees and you step on that pavement psh, quick, you're going to get a quick burn barefoot, right? Or if you're a kid and you're running and you fall and you're, you land on your elbow or shoulder, whatever, right? I could see you getting a pretty bad burn pretty quickly. I don't know if it's going to be like the chicken McNugget burn that the person got $800,000 for recently because the nugget fell on the kid's I'll leg. I'll probably try. But yeah, I mean, maybe sue the... Like, oh, the pavement was defective. You sue. Sue the sun. Sue the city of Phoenix, for example. But no, here's a headline. It shows you the media hype. Patients are being severely burned from falling on ground in Arizona heat wave. Is it something world news or something news? I don't even know. I never even heard of this. They just, if you look this up, it's thousands of headlines around the world about all the people that are falling and burning themselves on the pavement. I want to know how many. But don't worry. AZ Family's headline assures us that an end to Arizona's heat wave is in sight. Whew. The light at wow. the end of the tunnel. Whew. It's, it's, it's been like almost three weeks. Right, it's been it's been about three weeks that it's been excessively hot. And what did I say when they were freaking out? Like, Don't worry, it's gonna. I hear thunder it's, outside it's right summer. now. Summer pulled up to Flagstaff. There's water all over the place. There's puddles all over the place. Down, I know another headline yeah. about monsoon yet is still not here. It's still not like, here. It's I, raining all. I, it's I'm starting to rain. Sure it is actually. Just calm down, media. Stop. Stop making everything a grand case for the end of the world. It's like half the population yeah. isn't we dead. We got saguaro cactuses just melting. We've got apparently nearly They're every melting too. Yeah, you, you you probably don't want to send your kids outside anymore, and that's what they like. Stay inside; it's not safe. You may bur- if you fall, you may burn yourself. I mean, it's just these people are these people are monsters at this point. Unbelievable. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Send in your comments. We got another comment here. Go ahead, Olivia. Hi, Jeff and Olivia. It's always a pleasure to listen to your show. Thank you for keeping us informed regarding local and statewide topics. Well, 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 we got the UFO thing, too. So I don't know if that's local. We, <laughs> we started with that, but, but you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. When we heard you talking about poor Internet service, it sounded all too familiar. <laughs> In May, we experienced declining Internet service performance from a national company explored various options, not many available in Flagstaff, and found a great solution. We ordered a Starlink satellite dish from Elon Musk's company SpaceX for internet service. It's been a relief to have reliable internet connection and not have to deal with national companies that don't care about rural Arizona uh, customers. All our interactions with Starlink and SpaceX have been great. Perhaps you want to check into Starlink for your location. Enjoy the rest of your summer, and thank you again for your daily local show. Best regards, Starla from Flagstaff. Hey, thank you, Starla. Starla got Starlink. And I think that's that all just goes together <laughs> for me, right? And Starla, I actually have that on my list. I used to get, in Camp Verde, we, would, we, we have AT&T as the cell phone provider, the service provider. Yeah, it, not much they're it, providing. Until a few though. months ago, it came in great. And I still, I, I put this on the radio yesterday. I don't keep, mind calling them out and say, it's AT&T is my service provider. A couple months ago, it's like I have a spot that I have to go to, to if I need to upload or download any really big files. I call it the, and I'm out there. I'm like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like the old rabbit ears type of situation. I'm like, put the phone right here as a hot spot. And that's the point right there. Yes, it's 105 degrees out, but you're going to have to sit here for five minutes. You the know, place that he's describing, file. though, it was like, oh, like re- really specific. I was like, how did you even like get there? Lots of trial and error. I mean, I just I, I kept I kept walking around the property until, oh, it comes in here for some reason. It's really weird. I don't know. Maybe we should go before Congress with the UAP th- type of thing. There's like a repeater above us. Though, no, I have pretty much uh, hammered it down to I think it's time for me to bite the bullet and do the Starlink. The, the setup costs, uh, and maybe Starlink can email me just like, and I don't have to share it, but I, I think it was five or 600 bucks to get the dish. Um, and then it's like 100 or 120 bucks. I, I don't want to quote, misquote what Starlink is, but it was over 100 bucks a month, I believe. But that's what you're paying on a lot of the, if, cable providers and this and that which and you hear rural, it actually we works yeah we can't get that rural they're not going to run a cable to us the cell phone i thought was the solution i actually got a little box from at&t a little hot spot thing it has a range of like 18 feet i thought i was going to be able supposed to... to be 50 
Uh, it, was, it was ridiculous. So I got that thing. But maybe got it's like 50 total in any direction at once. If you get a signal. If you get a signal. You know, and that's the whole thing. It's like you're down there. You're not even writing. You have to connect to Google Docs or something. And you can't even connect. You're not, you've like, you go down there and you're like, eh, I'm not going to connect. Well, yeah, I gave up because it's been many months since we've gotten. Yeah. Yeah. So good service. Anyway, I appreciate that. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Sticking with the, the weather and uh, you hear a lot of thunder rumbling out there. I told you the other day we had a massive storm. Was this like two nights ago? Roll through Camp Verde, like yeah, the eastern side of Camp Verde. And the lightning was so cl- You could, I don't know what I smelled, probably something smoldering. You smelled it, right? Something yeah, was right burning. right when it hit. And I was concerned. I was like, hopefully it's not the top of our house smoking. Or like the chickens over there. Or something. Yeah, the chickens are in. Fried there's chicken. a lot of wire involved with the chicken, uh, wood and wire. So we're like, I was like, oh, it's like the toaster oven out there. Oh, it's so sad. But um, I was like, I actually went outside and I was looking for the smoke to be, you know, smoldering and, and this and that from that lightning strike that was so close. Well, apparently. But luckily it was raining. Yeah, and it rained, really like, an, it rained like an inch. So I told you it would rain again. <laughs> um, Prescott, there's a home in Prescott that actually um, set on fire from a lightning strike just the other day. It was like yesterday or something. So damage from, from lightning That's, hit I guess it, sort it of, could happen to anyone. Yeah, it could happen anywhere. In fact, there's uh, multiple fires out there right now. Obviously, you have the racetrack fire, um, which they say is like 20, 20% contained. Um, there's been a lot of fires started throughout uh, Arizona. A, a lot of them are smaller, but a lot of it is lightning caused. Uh, so it's let's let's hope that the the juices start flowing in the months. It looked like cottonwood. You, it looked like you guys were getting hammered as I was leaving. I saw the big shoots of rain coming on down. All right. Uh, if you get a, if, when you get all this rain, you know what happens. Sometimes you get the flooding that hits. You get a couple inches of rain really quickly, uh, and that water gets into your home. I want you to call Mammoth Restoration because this is a northern Arizona company, but this is a big company that you throw anything at them, they're going to be able to help you out. They'll suck out that water if you get the flooding situation. The mold happens. If you let that water sit there uh, for too long, they'll do the mold remediation, uh, smoke deodorization. If you're unfortunate to actually get into a a fire, fire and soot cleanup, they pack everything out there. The content specialists, this is a company that will do everything. They'll clean it. They'll restore it. They'll get it right. Mammoth Restoration, 24-7, 365-day emergency services. Write this number down. Mammoth Restoration, 877-714-0050. That's Mammoth Restoration at 877-714-0050. 0050 back in a minute. You're listening to the Jeff Orbit Show. You know, it is a beautiful time of year to take just a nice 30 minute drive from Flagstaff West onto I 40 to Williams. And why don't you pop in and say hi to former Mayor John Moore at Miss Kitty Steakhouse in downtown Williams on Route 66. Miss Kitty Steakhouse features. A, a huge variety of steaks. I absolutely love their steaks there. Every time I go out to Williams, I stop by Miss Kitty Steakhouse. I've also got a great selection, great menu of, of poultry and fish. And they're open from Monday. Oh, they're open every day of the week, from Monday through Sunday, from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Also, don't forget to check out Miss Kitty's Steakhouse breakfast menu, first-class breakfast between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. all throughout the week as well. Uh, for more information, you can go to MissKittySteakhouse.com. That's MissKittySteakhouse.com. On those busy Friday and Saturday nights when everybody's going out to see Old Town uh, Williams right there on Route 66, why don't you call for a reservation at 928-433-5889. That's Miss Kitty's Steakhouse in Williams on Route 66. It all ties back here. This is the circle of life. Of course it does. Speaking Wait. of aliens and close encounters. Now, if you just joined us, we opened up with the... Con- we were talking about the congressional hearings on the unidentified flying objects, UFOs, or what they're now calling UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. <sighs> I got that one out. That's a sketchy word. Um what are all those videos? What do you think? I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. But you pulled the story, and I was like, oh, don't you remember that movie? This is at, uh, we just went there a couple years ago. Six-year-old becomes youngest girl to climb Devil's Tower. 
You remember the movie, the Cl- Close Encounters of the Third Same Kind, or something like that? Remember, Matt, I, I just remember Matt. I gotta watch. It. I'm gonna rent this movie. I remember actually going there. You remember Devil's Tower? Devil's mm-hmm. Tower is awesome, but it's one of those things like the Statue of Liberty. It's really cool because you're kind of in the you're getting towards the Black Hills. Uh, you're getting on the eastern side of Wyoming. And you, you're getting to that forested area. It looks a lot like Flagstaff as far as the, the pine trees and all that. And then you're going to get over to the Black Hills in South Dakota, et cetera, et cetera. But there's, all, there's not a lot of huge mountains or anything on that side. And all of a sudden, this tower sticks out. But when you get up close to it, it is it, it's, a, it's awesome. You should definitely go drive and see this thing. But it's kind of like Statue of Liberty where you're like, eh, it just seems a little smaller than I than I thought, because on, on Close Encounters, this is a movie that came out in the 80s or something, 70s or 80s, Steven Spielberg, and everybody's getting called to this place where apparently the aliens are going to land, right? Oh, and yeah. Remember I that? Remember. And he's building the mashed potatoes. Remember the mashed potato scene? He's, he keeps asking his wife. His family thinks he's going nuts because he had seen, uh, he, had, he was at a railroad crossing and a ship came over or something, right? And somehow put in his brain that, hey, you got to get to this place, right? Yeah, so he's building railroad they're having mashed potatoes. I don't, and I don't know who makes this many mashed potatoes. Let's be honest here. This is <laughs> Hollywood. And he keeps making the mashed potatoes and make, he, he hoards all the mashed potatoes and he's making um, the picture of Devil's Tower. So it's a cool thing to see. But this girl was what, six? Yeah, a six Whew. year old Massachusetts girl becomes the youngest female on record to climb Wyoming's Devil Tower on July 8th when she scaled the tower. Ooh, in a hot time to climb it. Yeah. And she scaled the tower with her parents and melt? nine-year-old brother. They didn't melt. Hopefully. Well, she got to the top. Don't know no, if they good. got back down. Well, you don't go back down because that's where the alien ship is from Close Encounters. It was kind of funny, though, in the movie, though, there's like this huge area up top. And it's like when you go to Devil's Tower, it's like it's not that big. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't see them putting this whole uh, operation going on top of Devil's Tower. We're good for them. We need more people doing that, being adventurous, um, achieving things like that. But that's pretty amazing, six years old. I know, like to that. climb that. Yeah, and a family of climbers. I wonder what else she's done. Yeah, or all or of what them she have will, done. What she will do, right, going forward. And even the, the, the boy. The brother, yeah. At nine, slacker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to make a devil's tower full of pepperoni, I highly recommend going to our good friends at Namarco's Pizza. Get the extra pepperoni, just start making it right in the middle there, stacking the pizza up. Just keep asking for more. Yeah, making it do, 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 do. That was the, the theme, the song that the... Alien ship was playing. You don't remember. We're going to rent this movie. Let's do it tonight. Oh, Isabel's coming over. <laughs> Close encounters of the third kind coming up tonight in, in the Orvitz household. But hey, stop on by No Marcos Pizza. Voted best pizza in Flagstaff. Oh man, they've got. Uh, what what can you say about No Marcos? I mean, go there. Go there. <laughs> Get this pizza. It's worth coming to Flagstaff to get this pizza. Three locations where you can dine in, get some great craft beers as well. I like that. I don't know what they call it, the, the cheesy bread thing. Just ask cheesy for the cheese, bread. cheesy garlic bread thing. That is awesome as well. They got great wings too. Uh, check out Namarco's Pizza. Say hi to Isabel. She works at one of those. I don't know about tonight, but um, she Namarco's Pizza employs her and she builds I'm sure that devil's she towers will, on Yeah, there. love to give you lots of extra pepperoni for that. <laughs> Tell them you day. heard it here on the show, extra pepperoni. She'd come home with these stories and we'd be like, <laughs> oh, that's weird. That's weird. Yeah, it, it, there is some, it's always interesting. Well, I worked in the restaurant industry for a long time. It's always interesting. All right. Uh, we are expecting Glenn Lease next hour, I think. So we'll, we'll hopefully talk about ESGs. If not, Olivia and I will come up with some enthralling stuff to hit on. And don't forget to send those emails in. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Back in a few. This hour of the show is brought to you by Timberline. Firearms and training. Another hour starts now. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. Be part of the program by calling 877-971-3971. Welcome back. Hour two of the show. We've, we've multiplied here. Aren't you supposed to be cutting up corn or something? I did. I need more. I I'm picked. done. 
Well, we're going to have some corn if, tonight. If there's one thing we need, it's not more. Oh, this uh, well, is, if you I want me to cut, it. then I, I need more because I finished my job. Yeah, yeah. yeah they got to have a tool that you can just slide over the thing. Instead, uh, of, I think they do, but instead of you, you're cutting it with like a butcher knife. I'm worried that like I'm gonna have red corn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little concerned you you're gonna no damage my mom. corn. Have you never seen our chopped yeah, vegetables? She, she I, she's, she's I do this every day, all the time. Yeah, Maybe yeah. not corn, but okay. Well, well, welcome back, and I'd love to hear from you. Uh, we posed the question last hour, um, or Olivia did. We were talking about the the UFO hearings that are going on. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. You you don't know. No. You don't follow this at all? No. The Yeah, this one night we're all like sitting, watching TV, like watching videos, and by all of us I mean everyone but mom. <laughs> watching like the alien videos and Bigfoot videos and ghost videos <laughs> and everything. We spent like two hours in the room. No, well, but I, I, I heard you them. must have heard us like screaming. I and heard laughing, you laughing hysterically, never came. but I I yeah. I no. no, I showed them I'm not watching all the conspiracy stuff on YouTube and all that the, the was blurry funny. the blurry Mothman videos and Bigfoot videos. Hey, Mothman is real. Like, sure. No, we, he, got, he got crushed. We, we went to where Richard this Gere happened. killed them. Yeah, we talked about this last time. We we covered all of this. Oh. The West Virginia Mothman and the big mm-hmm. thing that collapsed the bridge. Yeah. That's another. So we have a decision to make tonight. Either we're watching Mothman prophecies or Close Encounters because we talked about the girl who's six years old who climbed Devil's Tower. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the, just recently. And her brother was, what, nine or something? Nine. Yeah, so pretty cool. And so I, automatically I thought of the time we went to Devil's Tower, but also the time – that or, or the the movie Close Encounters of the Third yeah, Kind. Yeah, I think we watched that after we went to Devil's Tower a few years ago. So is it, are we do? No, we no. just watched it like three years ago. But it's, it's okay. I'd rather watch the Mothman thing. Mm. It's something we haven't seen yet. And I want to see Close Encounters because that ties in <laughs> with my. <laughs> you're, okay, never hearing, you're never going to have a hearing. You're never going to have a hearing in front of Congress on the Mothman. However, there have they had a hearing today on the uh, UFOs slash UAPs that they're now, now calling them. And this all came out when these Navy pilots were following these and multiple times, multiple people on video. They locked onto these things. They're zipping. They're, they're all over the place. These cigar-shaped type things and, and, and actual saucer-looking things that they show on the video. Department of Defense, Pentagon had to release the videos. Something leaked out. This was in 2020. And Department of Defense comes out and says, yeah, they're there. We don't know what they are. Their technology way beyond where we're at. Do you believe that though? Or you don't believe that there's something flying out the these, video. in these videos? Do you believe that they don't know what it is? Oh no! I mean, they no. There's that's what the point of a lot of people in Congress right now are like. We want information. There's yeah. something going on here. You guys have been doing this. See, this goes to show you how far we've gotten from a representative republic, where there's agencies and things going on that. You just you even if you're elected, they know that they just got to wait you out. Mm-hmm. You're there for two years, four years of this presidency, eight years, whatever. We're not going to tell you because I'm here for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And I'm creating a kingdom within the empire here that you're not even going to know about it. I mean, where do you think? Some- well, because all they have to do is just say, well, we don't know what that is and you know, claim ignorance on it. And, but what they're saying, they're not, they're not saying, no, there's no video. There's no this or that. They're saying, yeah, that thing was shooting all around. We don't know what it is. So they are finally, what happened with the big thing in in 2020 that happened that apparently you, you didn't pay attention to is they acknowledged that, yeah, there's these videos, there's legitimately something there that's super advanced. That's zipping at speeds and doing things. We don't know how it's doing. That's, uh, impossible by the, the, the standards of uh, the, our our theories on physics and all that. I mean, it just they mm-hmm. shouldn't be able to do that, right? So they've that's the point of all this. They finally acknowledge that, but they're saying, oh, but we don't know anything else. So that's the whistleblower that came out, and he was testifying before Congress today. This is mediate. This is all over the place. South Carolina Republican Representative Nancy Mace. Uh, asked the witness at the House Oversight Committee UFO hearing today when she asked about whether the U.S. government has recovered, quote, non-human bodies from crashed crafts in its possession. Uh, The answer from the guy was yes. Yeah. He said, yeah. This was former U.S. Intel officer and uh, David Grush, G-R-U-S-C-H, testified before House Oversight and Accountability Subcommittee on National Security, blah, 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 blah. 
on, on these videos and what's going on. Mace asked Grish if he believes our government has made contact with intel- intelligent extraterrestrials, to which he replied that was something he can't discuss in a public setting. So he says, yeah, I've recovery, but he says can't discuss this in a public setting. So there's these people out there that are now testifying in groups that have been formed. They're like, okay, enough is enough. Something's going on out there. What is it? So you need to watch some videos. You need, we need to take mom down to YouTube rabbit hole tonight you before we watch Close watch Encounters one. of the Third Kind. Yeah, once they get into Bigfoot, I'm gone, and they get into all these crazy See, things. See, you mentioned Alien, and I'm gone. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe, UFO, okay, they say I'm non-human, done. but UFO is unidentified flying object. I mean, there are, the, the government has acknowledged, and you can see the video yourself, that there's something that's unidentified flying up there. That's simply what it means. I know what it means. You know, but, yeah. may, maybe we've got more technology than we realize. I, who the heck knows what, what, what those could be, but there's something zipping around up there. Not every time, you know, all the yeah. thousands of cases. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we looked up? Remember the... Yeah, um, it's happened to us. Remember, the lights? Light? remember the lights in Camp Verde yeah. that were zipping all around? We're like, that is crazy. It was the casino lights. They must have been having no, a concert there was or something. The, the satellite. The, oh, and then the satellite thing. All of a sudden, uh, we, Musk saw, satellite yeah, yeah, we saw these um, these lines zip, 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 yeah. zip, zip. And we're like, oh, my, that is crazy. So what do I do? I text Bruce Sidlinger, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, yeah, that's Starlink. They just launched, you know, at blah, blah, blah. He yeah. had the whole information to me in about 20 seconds, which was kind of bizarre. It's like, that's that's really quick that he, he was able to shoot that out. But yeah, he how watches many people that had stuff. asked him already? I think, I think Bruce is an alien. <laughs> Maybe you listening, Bruce? Bruce? Suit. He's in the Bruce suit, like on uh, was that Men, Men in, in Black? Black? Yeah. Anyway, so the question I ask everybody out there is, what do you think about all this stuff? I mean, if you've been following it, or you like Angela that has not followed it all, like whatever. I saw. I don't follow it because I see Alien or anything like or that. UFO I just like, like you tune I'm, out. No, mm-hmm. I'm not. I just that doesn't interest me. When there's I an alien, see why not? When there's an alien in the cornfield and we have to battle them, like in signs, you will be unprepared, <laughs> and but we'll still protect you. Right, Olivia? That's why I have you around. That's, That's why, why I you keep know. you around. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, and let me do my first sponsor <laughs> here for the hour. Um, and that's somebody that I think you might need right now. Gettle's High Desert Mechanical. Oh, yeah. Oof. That's tough being without AC. I mean, you uh, can do it in Flagstaff, but you're yeah, in Verde Valley. Sure. You're in Sedona. Even in Prescott, that's borderline sometimes. Even Flagstaff sometimes, you're like, whew, Yeah. It, it's yeah. cranking hot. There's a couple hours in the afternoon. That, oh, man. Yeah, you need it. Look, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical, they can handle anything you throw at them. If you've got a problem with your air conditioner right now, uh, they'll get out there, they'll get this thing fixed, and then looking at it longer term, you know, maybe you need a new unit, they will install a new unit. I know because we're a customer of Gettle's High Desert Mechanical. Give them a call if you've got any issues going on, 928-567-2200. That's Gettle's, it's spelled G-O-E-T-T-L-E-S if you want to look up, I'm sorry, I just butchered that. G O E T T L S. G O E T T L S. If you want to Google that and uh, get more information, but you can call them too. Some people still use the phone, I hear. Yeah. You know, ET phone yeah. home, 928 567 2200. That's another one. Did you ever see that, Olivia? ET? They've yeah. seen ET. Seen that? Yeah. I've seen that so I many just times. Hope, let, me, let me give this number real quick. 928-567-2200. Gettle's High Desert Mechanical, 928-567-2200. I just hope if it, they they were, if there are beings out there uh-huh. like that, that they were like E.T. Because E.T. was really nice. Oh, he was so cute, yeah. too. I mean, he gave him some M&Ms. All he wanted was to go home. He just wanted to go. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe these people got... That's it. I, maybe we went through the, the wormhole in 2020 with the COVID <laughs> craziness, uh-huh. and they got stuck here, and they're like, get and me out, like, get oh, me oh, out. My goodness. They're zipping around like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. These people are out of their minds. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, you've unearthed something on YouTube, and this has to do with the latest leftist craziness that's happened and this was the um uh small town what's his name of the song again jason aldean, jason aldean. try that in a small try town, in a small town. Yeah. yeah you remember we were talking about that a couple of days ago or last week yeah, sometime. the video hit last friday and it showed all the the peaceful uh rioting and looting that was going right. on during blm um 2020 and he this song try that in small town came out in may he did a video just like last week and they went berserk and boycott him, he's racist, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Well, the song 
went up to number one on iTunes. The song went to number two, like on the Billboard charts. Mm-hmm. It's playing all over the place. Yeah, he's done concert. He's done multiple concerts since then. Said, "Ha kind of thing. Yeah. However, you, there was something that's come out that there may have been an edit on the well, video. Well, this, I mean, on CNN Entertainment, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Sorry, it, that's it, not polite to do on the radio. It says that true. the video has been shortened by a few seconds and. I guess at some point there was um, footage of whatever state of emergency declared in Georgia. Okay. There was d- footage of like the you know something that says state of emergency declared in Georgia, and that all of a sudden that's gone from the YouTube video. Just that part. I wonder. Just that part. I wonder what the reasoning because. And I don't know who did it, or yeah, I mean who who could edit that. Could YouTube edit it, or does it have to be the person who published it? I don't know, but I'd say that if we wait a day or two, if we survive that long, because cactuses are melting at this point, so and stuff, cacti, sorry, cac- did I say, what did I say? Cactuses. cactuses. <laughs> it's so much easier to say that, though. Like, English is the so weird. The plural of we cactus cacti? is cacti. What's Take it singular? from Cactum? a native Arizonan. I, I like cactuses, though, but okay, cacti, <laughs> cact- cactus. Cactus is singular? Cactus? Yeah. What? Cacti. Cacti, okay. One cactus, two cacti. Whew. Goose it's more geese. than anyone needs Goose to know. <laughs> I'll say it right and I won't correct you. Get the, the, the English police around here. <laughs> but yeah, they're melting. She was talking, okay. that's the national media saying that. Are so. they really? Uh, and my point being is let's wait a couple of days because in a couple of days the cactus will stop melting. Mm hmm. The because heat the wave, end the, the wave end of the heat inside. wave. Now it's like, we're almost to 30 days in this heat wave. And I was like, no, no, we're not. We're like almost to three weeks. Yeah. And it's questionable, your, your counting measures now. And they're talking about all the children that are burning themselves on the pavement. And it's like, I don't want kids to get burnt. But yeah. is it three kids, six kids, 6,000 kids? One kid. One kid. <laughs> I mean, it's just, so my point being with the Jason Aldean video is in a day or two, we'll know who edited it because he'll come out and say, yeah, yeah we, we edited then, this out because of this, or no, the big tech media edited it out, yeah. and, you know, they stink. I think that he's proved himself, and even if he edited that little part out for s- some weird reason, Why? he left yeah. all the other stuff in it, so it's not like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're going to pull this video. You know, usually these these stars, these superstars and these entertainers, like, I'm so sorry, I've been re-educated now, and yeah. I'm going Forget to... Me. Forgive me. I've, I, I've I wasn't apologized. aware of how hurtful what I said and did. And you know they're full of it because yeah. they put it out there. But yeah. they come out and do the apology tour. He didn't do that. Right. So even if he edited a couple seconds, okay, let's yeah. you keep an eye on that one. But hopefully, if he did do it, he'll explain why. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because I, I, he's been saying the whole time that you know everything is real, actual footage, and you know I'm not changing or you know. Have needing to explain anything yeah. further well, than that. In this high-profile thing, you're, if he did it, he, you want to get in front of that quick. You want to say, hey, mm-hmm. we're, we're doing this just for this reason. And, and yeah. we're leaving everything else. We stand yeah. behind this still. Well, these articles you read are so annoying, too, because they talk about how, oh, it was filmed at what looks like the courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee. And yeah, but okay, maybe it was. But you know what? There's been other places. Other There's been a couple of movies that have that in it. And other things have done it, at that courthouse too. It's a well-known filming location. It's annoying because yeah, yeah. they they leave out the fact that other people have used that courthouse too. This is stupid, anyway. It's like you can't. We we mentioned this last week. You have to be aware of everything in the background nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You have to know the potential history on every single thing, every single pitfall. You have to like map out and whiteboard. Well, if we do this here, and then there might be this, and there might be that. It's just, well, and the I'm not living in that of, world. This movie we filmed in front of that, and that doesn't get any news coverage. Yeah. But someone does a video, and that we don't like that guy because he, you know, is a now Trump supporter or whatever. Now it's no, you can't do. Wasn't that. something like Hannah Montana? Does that name sound familiar? Yeah, it was, was like one of those. I'd have to like, look it up. Oh but well, that's been well. A, if if yeah. had Barbie, yeah, done. Or, I don't even know who's in Disney that movie. movie or something. Yeah, yeah. They, that that Barbie movie apparently is is the number one movie and. Pulled in however yeah. many hundred. It's like, oh man, that thing just looks. We should, uh, well, Isabel's coming for dinner tonight. She went and saw it. She with went her and saw it. And, um, so we'll have to ask her how it was. Yeah. And we're like, oh, please don't. You know, but I, <laughs> I haven't seen it, but it, I, I, I know Ben Shapiro um, from the Daily. Um, which one is that? 
whatever. He has a talk show and all that. He went and saw it. Mm-hmm. And he critiqued it. He said it's, it's woke paradise. Yeah. So I feel better when people do that after a movie came out. Because remember Indiana Jones, everybody's saying how woke it was. And it hadn't even Before, been out. Right. I was like, I went to see it. And there was, there was one thing that you're like, eh, that was annoying. But it wasn't woke. So I yeah. always feel better when people actually review something. And it's actually out. Yeah. I don't think I'm that guy for you out there, guys. I, I can't do that. I can't go see. I know Harkins was promoting go see Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible, Oppenheimer, and Barbie, and Barbie, which were like what again? The aliens, the aliens are floating the around saying, this, "Yeah, this it's, doesn't jive." It's and, like, and it was in within like a week or two weeks' uh, time. It's like who's who's going to see? What type of person is going to want to see Mission Impossible and Barbie? First of all, I, I don't know. I just don't have the time to see three movies that are like Oppenheimer's like two two hours forty minutes. Mission Impossible is like two forty. Yeah, Barbie's like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Barbie's an hour and a half. I mean, if if that's two hours, yeah, you know that that would be way too long, right? So, well, I I didn't read uh, anything about the Barbie movie, but I did see some comments or headline that was like, "Oh, all girls and we, they should all pay attention to the ending." And oh, so I'm the curious the now. What the ending is because I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, it's a girl power movie, and oh, God, I, here's what I don't like: is you God, don't need Ken anymore. Yeah, Ken is like you don't need Ken to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you have a Ken? You know, actually, Ken's having a baby. Maybe Ken had a baby. It's like you don't have a baby at all. Just make Ken do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's probably what it is. But I don't want to spoil it. Now we got to go see it. I guess. <laughs> That'd be one of those movies like in, um, you, you remember, like you go to uh, Nevada, you go to Laughlin or something and they're serving alcohol at the movie. You, you would oh, need something to get yeah. through. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't or think I can Or smuggle in it. your flask. We need more men in this country. That's what we need, quite honestly. More Kens. M- manly men, the old Ken, um, because we got a, just a bunch of wimps out there. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the whole thing that's being promoted. Olivia's laughing at me. Is and I want strong. I you're a strong woman. Yeah. You're a strong woman. You know, Isabel's a strong woman. I, but we don't need to just. We don't need to put men into the. You know how for for the past decade or two, every guy on any sitcom is just a a moron. Yeah. Or a mm-hmm. wimp or this or that. It's like just stop with that already. Stop stop doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's going to become like a Star Trek episode where the the men are just like curled in the corner. You know. Well, we've been talking about that sort of thing recently with the school issues you know and it's always like the women the moms at the school board meeting or the moms out with the signs in front of the yeah i'm not saying no dads did it but there was definitely more mostly women and i i just i know from being involved with three different schools here in flagstaff that i i see moms Moms. not just during the day at school but field trips and and pto meetings and in fairness traditionally it's it's been that way for a long time i know i know yeah. If and I'm not being sexist, but that's the way it was for yeah. a long time. My moms did that stuff, right? You know, right? And it used just, to be there's yeah. a lot of one income households in the guy. Yeah. And I'm saying we need to go. I'm not saying go back to all. That. I'm just saying, dude, seriously, where's the where's the dudes? Yeah. You know, where's the the the, the old Ken? Yeah. Not the new Ken. All right. Love your thoughts. <laughs> We're gonna get some emails today, Olivia. Between Barbie and aliens. Yeah. After that little conversation, we might have quite a few. I think Barbie's an alien. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. The reason why the aliens are probably zipping around and picking up Barbie or gold and silver. You know, that's what I would do because maybe that's not plenty. Maybe it is plenty. I actually think outside of, you know, out in space somewhere, there's actually a lot of gold. Hmm. It's just because gold came from space. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just whatever crashed in, I'm not a scientist or anything, but meteors or whatever, mm-hmm. if that's even a correct terminology. It, it's that's why we have a limited supply, but someday if we get out there, like hundreds of years from now, then buying why are you laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> buying gold, you know, you might not want to do it, but I think we've got a long way to go. So I think you're safe in calling Justin at Desert Gold Exchange. You're making me laugh, um, and buying some gold and silver right now because I think it'll be a long time before we get to that asteroid belt or whatever, whatever wherever it's all at to get more. Yeah, Justin yeah. may maybe heading out there. Desert Gold Exchange is where I buy my physical gold and silver securely stored. And that's a big question. We should do a whole show on that about storing the stuff because people think it's like sitting here or there. It's it's off. 
it's off site, but close enough to where you can get it, where you don't have to go to like the Cayman Islands or something yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. that's pretty important. Uh, Justin will give you some tips on that. This is a family company based right here in Arizona. Call Desert Gold Exchange at 888 888- 852-4343. That's Desert Gold Exchange at 888-852-4343. One thing on education here, um, I think it was, we were talking about this the other day, how you know Katie Hobbs hates the ESA program, and now there's this new school that's the LGBT plus whatever school that is, what was it yesterday, Olivia? They're just going to save kids. You know, save their lives. Life saving. Life saving. Did front you listen page. to the podcast? I'm like, this is front, front page. page. Yeah. It's Arizona Republic. I mean, right after the um you know, heat, this the melting yeah. cactus and the, the the throngs of people that are burning themselves on, on the pavement because it's so hot. And uh comes this, you know, oh, there's gonna be an LGBT school that's gonna save kids' lives, and this is done with the vouchers. So the now ESA. it's okay. So now I think it's okay. But no, Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs is still going after ESA program. She was on KTAR earlier yesterday or whatever saying it's unsustainable the program's unsustainable and i sit here and i scratch my head there's sixty thousand kids on the esa program out of i think there's what 1.1 million yeah, over a million it's over a million let's call it a million kids on uh, in, in the school system the mm-hmm. arizona school system how is moving let's just call it a million how is moving sixty thousand out of a million from the public school so over here i'm, I'm holding my left arm up to the right arm over here just moving the money over there, how is that How is that unsustainable? If you're telling me that's unsustainable, then the entire 1 million school or 1 million kids, the school system in Arizona is unsustainable because it costs $13,000 to educate a kid in the public school in Arizona. It's like right. there's the same amount of it's kids the same thing. going to school. Yeah, I mean, this, this well, is... Well, and in the past, before the ESA, the state would give any leftover monies... You know, if, it, if like our kids say we're in the public school and then we take them out, well, the money that the schools would have gotten for our kids that were in the public school, all that money for any kid that's, you know, that not no longer there, moved out of state or mm-hmm. whatever, it all gets like divvied, at least to my understanding, divvied up between the s- school systems in the state. So... Even if some of that money were to move over to a private school or home school for an ESA student, well, the the public school no longer has that child to educate. So, you know, maybe they don't need that extra teacher anymore or that extra resource. Well, the union don't like that. No, but... But Teacher that's union. that's basic economics. Is if there's less kids in the public school system. Yeah, they're not getting as much money, but they have less kids. So how can they not still operate? They that want way? every kid possible. They want all sixty thousand because that makes them more powerful. We talked about this last want. hour I'm, with the un- public know, unions and yeah, things like that. I know more power, but that it like economically that doesn't know, make any but, sense. Yeah, it doesn't. But it it does. So the public schools don't need as much money because they're no, not educate. They, sixty thousand of the kids are no longer there. Exactly. So they don't need as much. So money. maybe you need a less school, one less school in your district that yeah, has eight schools. Exactly. Maybe you need one less school bus. Maybe one less teacher. Oh, but what about the teachers? Well, the teacher's going to go over and teach at the private school now yeah. and probably make the same amount or more money. But the idea that you move sixty thousand out of the one million over to here at 7200 a pop and it's costing 30 it's actually it should save the school district it should save the taxpayers money because they still get nonsense. federal money for yeah. the students These are the same people that come out the headlines that you know the, the world's about to end because of climate change uh everybody's burning themselves on the pavement we're in a 63 year cycle put on your mask keep two six foot social distance don't leave your house don't leave especially. your oh yeah I new mean, york they just i'm not making this up in new york they're saying oh don't leave your well this is covid but now they're saying oh because it's because it's so hot out and more the or smoke, the air, pollution. air pollution, you should stay inside. I mean, who listens to these morons and at this point anymore? Oh, people do. I mean, uh, uh, I was the first to say no in <laughs> COVID. Like, we're, no one's going to do that. Oh, I had to eat oh, my words. No, no, they, no, yeah, but so many people went along with it. I want your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. That's talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. If you think about refinancing your home right now, do what I did and call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans. She'll be able to help you out. Um, here's a great thing about Nova 
home, about Nova Home Loans, uh, Arizona-based company, Arizona's largest privately owned mortgage lender. Uh, they can make decisions like a bank, but because they also act like a broker, they can find the best programs out there for you. Uh, another thing here, Kim Dawson will make sure you get a pre-approval, if you qualify, pre-approval letter in hand, so that way you know exactly how much money you can um qualify for and to, to buy a home. Uh, so call Kim, a little distraction here. Call Kim Dawson. She'll be able to help you out. Uh, 928-310-6458. That's 928-310-6458. By the way, one more thing. Mention the Jeff Orvid Show and get $250 off the lender's fee at closing. That's Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans, 928-310-6458. Kim Dawson, NMLS 697411. Nova Home Loans, NMLS 3087. BK number 090242. Equal housing opportunity subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Back in a minute. This is the Jeff Orovitz Show. Call Diamond Auto Glass first before making an auto glass claim. Here's why. Most insurance companies use a nationwide glass shop to answer their calls, and they're going to try and route you to their shop, which may very well delay the time it takes to replace your glass. When you get a rock chip in your windshield, stop by Diamond Auto Glass as soon as possible. Repairing a chip will stop it from spreading and save you from a costly windshield replacement. If you've replaced your windshield with Diamond Auto Glass, you have a lifetime chip repair warranty and no appointments necessary. Just stop on by on 4th Street and Flagstaff, and most chip repairs take about 10 to 15 minutes. Always call Diamond Auto Glass first at 928-779-4140. That's 928-779-4140, or go to thedifferenceisclear.com. You're listening to The Jeff Orbit Show. All right, welcome back. Olivia's with me. We're down to two. Down to Mom two. abandoned us. Taekwondo is out there working on this first stripe of the black belt. Mm-hmm. Working towards yeah. a second black belt, I guess, is what you could say, but that'll take quite some time. Uh, we do have some email comments. We'll see what we can get through. I thought that the UFO talk, and as you know, Congress is discuss- discussing that. It must be slow. They must have all the problems fixed. So they can talk UFOs and stuff like that. They've oh, got all the time yeah, in the there world. must be nothing else. When Olivia Earth gets stumped, she looks at discuss. me like deer in the headlights. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, because sometimes you just don't make sense. Like well, you s- okay, you're saying it didn't make gold sense. Gold thing was, last time. Yeah, last I was segment. talking about uh, gold and desert gold exchange and the rarity of gold and how it came from space. And Olivia is half listening to me when I do these, our, our great sponsors and endorse our sponsors. So I do have a follow-up here because I looked up some information at the break on, and I'm not an expert on this. I'm not a a person that understands where all this stuff comes from. So you probably are. Uh, There's probably somebody out there. But most of the gold, or the gold on Earth did come from space, from asteroid hits. And I've got the information. But hang tight for that. If you're selling a home, if you're trying to get maybe out of Flagstaff, for example, you're like, hey, I want to get out. I want to go to Prescott. I want to go to Kansas. Or maybe you just want to move to the other side of town and get a, a bigger house. Or some people are downsizing, too. Maybe it's, hey, I'm going to downsize. Kids are gone. Too echoey or something. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. Too close to the train tracks. So look, Kelly Broadus, she's going to be able to help you out. Um, if I was selling a home right now, I'd call Kelly Broadus with the Broadus Property Group, brokered by EXP. She, she knows her stuff. Um, we're going to be talking with her. We've got her scheduled to come on the program next week. Um, get, get a real estate update. She's got extensive experience. That's why I lean on her. Uh, of the market right here in Flagstaff and the surrounding area, she knows how to price market and sell your home for the highest price possible. She's got a dedicated team that will help you out in full transparency through the whole process, walking you through. Because, look, people don't sell a lot of houses over their lifetime, and this can be a very complicated process. You don't want uh, your uncle, uncle Earl who got his license I'm sorry if Uncle Earl actually got his license, but he sold one house in like two years. You need somebody with the experience, and that is Kelly Broadus. Just Google her. You'll see a lot of great reviews she's got out there, B-R-O-A-D-D-U-S, or give her a call, 888-446-5602, or go to northernarizonafinehomes.com. So, yeah, I'm on this site, and it says basically gold is found in rock ores that date back to the Precambrian era, which is 4.6 billion to 541 million years ago. It's a period when asteroids just bombarded the Earth, kept hitting, hitting. So there's a little bit of gold in each one, got deposited, and that's why you got to 
you know, mine for it. It's down there under the layers or whatever. Um, and I had said, hey, I thought there's a lot of gold in space out there, asteroids, things like that. What do we really know, though? Like if you travel, if we were to get out of the solar system, if we were to get to another star system, do we really know the gold content? I don't think so. How rare is it? They're saying it's very rare that here's a Google search. On a whole, there is more gold in space than on Earth because space is simply exponentially bigger. <laughs> mm, that sounds very... That's deep. Yeah. That's deep right there. <laughs> I wasn't the only one that was confused, though. Mom and I were looking at each other like, what is he going on about now? I don't even know. I don't even want to listen back to that mess, you know. <laughs> in fact, gold is more rare in space when scaled to the size of Earth, it is even considered rare when compared to other elements. So maybe it's even more rare. So you might be, even if we got to the gold asteroid eventually and towed it back, you're probably good calling Desert Gold Exchange and just stocking up on that stuff because I don't think there's going to be some bonanza of supply coming online. That was my point. But someday you, you go hook up to an asteroid or those aliens they're investigating brings a big old asteroid of gold and all of a sudden the gold's worthless, but I don't, I don't see that happening. Yeah, also Anytime those soon. two sentences just totally contradicted each other <laughs> on that thing you were reading, like more gold in space, but actually Earth has more gold than space. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's, it's Google. All right, let's do comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Quite a while ago, I and my then husband saw a large group of big oval things make, <laughs> that's descriptive, <laughs> make complex maneuvers near our house. No sound at all, and they were close. According to the literature, they're gray, not green. On a different note, did you see the bobcat picture, Kathy and Flagstaff? What literature? Like a little green man? Doesn't is that say. what I was saying? Little green man? It's gray instead of green, but everybody knows it is. On X Files, they're, they're like gray. They're, they're, they're more gray. So. And they're naked and they have the big heads. Yeah, why are they always naked? If they have is the that, technology to get. To yeah, if a you had all the technology, I guess if you were that advanced, you'd be like, I'm just showing up naked. Is that what, or maybe it's this clothing that fits super tight. It's like Star Trek. It's, They're wearing a oh, unitar. That's not Did what you steal it? Say. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's that like that fairy tale, like child story, the emperor's new clothes. And it's like the moral is, I don't remember the moral, which is probably the part you should remember, but it's like <laughs> they fool him because he's very like vain about his clothes. And so they're like these thieves that are like, oh, we'll make you like invisible clothes and so they make nothing and he gives them a bunch of gold and so then he's just going out like in his underwear oh, but he like thought he had clothes. invisible clothes i don't remember what my point was but <laughs> i thought of that story it is weird. okay so she says they're gray yeah, she so saw they have so she's clothes. saying she saw oval objects see those are the ones that who knows what it was it could be that could be explained if if we had like a project blue book thing going on still um but the ones, the videos I'm talking about, the Defense Department released, just YouTube them. Um, um, they came out in 2020. I think they were taken in like 2017. That's the stuff that I look at. It's like, wow, that's really com compelling. And they're acknowledging, hey, there's something there, but we don't know what it is. And I just, it would be good to know what that is. It'd be good to figure that out. Yeah, that would. There's that movie um, and that event that supposed, supposedly happened in eastern Arizona, somewhere over by uh, Snowflake or whatever. Should I ask uh, Walt Blackman? He was on the program yesterday. Uh, I saw the movie in the mid-'90s, I think. It was um, Fire in the Sky, about these loggers that were out, and one of the people went up and got close, supposedly, to the craft and disappeared. And then yeah, came out nationally. Yeah, that's happened. Came out nationally, and he came back, right? And oh. I just saw him on an interview, and he's like, well – yeah, this this did happen. I think they were trying to help me though because I got too close and I was like injured by the craft or whatever, the radiation or whatever. That's what. Or they're like at. invisible barrier. But I saw that movie when I was probably a, a teenager, and um, that scared the heck out of me because you know we go out in the forest a lot and you're out there at the night at night and you see these Maybe movies. Maybe that's where the invisible ship is parked. <laughs> oh man, you see these movies and you're in remote places at night camping and stuff and sometimes your mind wanders and you like you start thinking about you it i shouldn't have watched it's like watching um what was that one where tom hanks went down in the air airplane um um not lost or, or lost would be a good example <laughs> yeah. you watch a movie like that while you're flying we always talk about yeah <laughs> well we might crash on the lost island yeah but. yeah the one with wilson the soccer ball when he's floating Oh, uh, Castaway. Castaway. That's it. That's it. Castaway. All right. Let's get back to some more. And thank you. Um, who just emailed? 
Kathy Flagstaff. Kathy, I'm having lost time. Kathy, uh, thank you for that. And I did see your pictures of the Bobcat. I appreciate that. I had asked anyone out there, hey, I've never seen a Bobcat. I mean, I've seen pictures, um, but I've never, I've, I haven't seen a Bobcat in the wild. And apparently Kathy has them coming around all the time. Which I don't think is Maybe a good aliens. thing, but I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't mind. I mean, as long as they don't eat my corn. I'm good to or go. Chickens. A uh, follow up here from last hour, if I can find it now. At this point, we've we've gone so astray, Olivia. Proposition 480 and Flagstaff. So I mentioned to you that uh, a listener had emailed us that Northern Arizona um, Healthcare Group, the, the hospital in the Flagstaff area and other areas throughout Northern Arizona. Obviously, uh, this listener had said that they saw that. The group is filing um, a lawsuit basically against the petitions that came in to rezone the land. So quick quick recap real quick. Did I say quick like three times? I said like four times. Um, recap on this one. The hospital group went before the Flagstaff City Council. They requested a rezone of properties out by like the airport, the Fort Tuthill area, to build a big like billion-dollar-plus hospital complex out there. A group went out and got signatures to refer it to the ballots. It's now called Proposition 480. That's the rezone. They want to put that before the voters of Flagstaff, which is a complex issue. I'd love to see people actually read the probably pages that explains the, this uh, rezone issue. So the hospital did file a lawsuit today. Uh, this is an article from the Arizona Daily Sun. Wednesday morning, they filed a request with the Coconino County Superior Court on Tuesday to disqualify the referendum from the special election ballot. Uh, here's a quick statement from Northern Arizona Healthcare. While NAH supports the public's right to vote on a referendum about certain community issues, such as the rezoning of NAH owned land for a new regional hospital, it is con- it is concerned that voters were not given accurate information about NAH's new hospital project before signing the petition to refer it to the ballot. Um, they said that in a statement. So they're claiming that, I guess, they're claiming that the supporters of putting this on the ballot gave out false information while discussing like what? this. what? Yeah, th- this is, to me, this is probably a tough I don't lawsuit. see how false it could really be. Well, and to, so, pro- and to prove that. So they're going to have to prove that in front of a judge that here is specifically the false information. That's a tough nut to crack. Um, I, I, I understand they're going to try and you do these legal maneuvers, uh, especially in something that's a billion dollar project. But let's we'll, we'll just see. hope it's not 10 years later. Oh, a decision's well, been made. No, with these election ones, they, they're timed. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be done fairly quickly because obviously they've got some time. This will be on, I'm not sure when this, if this will be on the general election, the 2024 election, or during like the primary, whenever that is in August or whatever, um, next year. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on it and there'll be some kind of hearing at some point, on some point, um, on this one on proposition 480 all right love your thoughts talk with jeff at icloud.com keep those comments coming in and uh, if we don't get to them today we will get to them on tomorrow's program now waiting for a recession to become official that's pretty late to make any constructive changes uh, glenn Lee and his team at wt wealth management they know that predictions about what markets might do or might not do quite honestly are often wrong Glenn Leist at WT Wealth Manager can help you strategically position your portfolio based on where you are in your financial life. Making emotional decisions is not a good strategy. I've been there, been there, done that. Uh, why don't you give Glenn Leist a call at WT Wealth Management. Get a free complimentary, no obligation consultation. Take a second set of eyes to look at your portfolio and see you know, where do you want to be when, when it comes to retirement and down the road. Give Glenn a call at 928-225-2474. That's Glenn Leist at WT Wealth Manager at 928-225-2474. All right, don't go anywhere. More to come. Back in a minute.
You're listening to The Jeff Orovitz Show. Is the Biden economic disaster hitting your household a bit harder than you expected? Is inflation killing your personal budget? Now, Just Wireless was here for you in 2009, and they are here for you in 2023. Why would you pay full price for a new smartphone when you can get a great refurbished phone at Just Wireless and save a whole bunch of money? Or if you're like me, I've taken my smartphone to Just Wireless to get it repaired. They've taken care of cracked screens, charging port problems. They can also change out that battery. Check out Just Wireless's two locations in Flagstaff, across from the Flagstaff Mall and also on Milton Avenue, right as I-17 comes into town. Stop on by today and see how your hometown, locally owned cell phone guru can help you save money. And also check them out at JustWirelessAZ.com. That's JustWirelessAZ.com. All right, welcome back. Just about out of time. I will hit on this more tomorrow. The, the Federal Reserve did hike the baseline interest rate the, by another quarter point. 22-year high for the interest rates now. So it's still raising it. <laughs> so obviously they're still trying to fight inflation or do something. We'll give you details on that tomorrow. Um, Olivia, tomorrow I have uh, Rob Wilson from Timberline Firearms and Training. I love when he comes on the program. Yeah, I feel like I, it's been a while. It's been so a couple it's weeks. Good he's coming. Yeah, it's good because we got a lot to ca- catch up on. He's also a uh, plan. I think he's on the planning and zoning commission for the Co- for Coconino County. Yeah, I thought so as well. So do me a favor if you have, I guess any kind of he's really good at any Arizona political type issues, but also obviously he owns Timberline Firearms and Training. If you've got specific Second Amendment questions, uh, firearms issues, questions, anything like that, I think that'd be a good, you know, get those in in advance. Email those, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Yeah, get those in and we'll, we'll discuss that tomorrow with, uh, with, with Rob Wilson. Just hitting all kinds of wild buttons today. And then we'll, we'll share some more of your alien emails tomorrow. Yeah, you have to send us those. And we'll We're watch Close Encounters. them. I think Close Encounters. I think that'll be fun. Or E.T. tonight. One of those. Or Mothman. Or Mothman. I don't know if I can handle that. All right, everybody. Have a great, safe night. Be back here tomorrow. Take care. See you soon. All right, Rob, you've got a couple of cool things going on out there at Timberline Firearms and Training. Um, July, a great July special. Celebrating coming. our independence with two big specials at, at Timberline Firearms. First one, you can shoot for as long as you like. No more one-hour range limit. So 24 but, hours. Well, the, yeah, there's oh. always fine print <laughs> in our normal operating hours on okay. our normal days that we're open on the day of the purchase. Yeah, okay. okay. You can shoot for as long as you like. And we pr- encourage people to practice and be good, safe, responsible firearms owners. And then we've got safes. With Liberty Safe, we got a big delivery of Liberty Safes in just last week. Um, a, lot, a large variety available for you to select from, and if you bring in cash, you save three percent automatically. Okay, that's not a good to deal. mention that you're only paying county sales tax instead of flag tax. I still got a tax. gift card. I got to get out. Get Please out. Please do come yeah. on out, and you do those gift cards too. So if people yep. are looking like present for. Anything coming up for a loved one or whoever, or me. A great way to, yeah, to make sure your loved one gets something they like, get them a card so they can come out and pick it out themselves. Okay, cool. So July range time when you go in there that same day, uh, stay as long as you want and get get uh, Get your get practice up, get in, your get practice good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. Timberline Firearms and Training, just five minutes north of the Flagstaff Mall.